So um, we started on the um, Pilsen Master Plan a few years ago. We actually have been active in Pilsen for about 10 years. And so we were very engaged with the community and with the developers that want to do work in Pilsen. Um, this led to, um, to the collaboration of working on a master plan with the neighborhood and with the, um, the local aldermen and the city. So the big vision um, uh, here for, for Pilsen is really taking the transportation lines, like for example Ashland and Damon, and how to reconnect those to the river. Um, also Blue Island, which is at an angle, and there are the public spaces. What we are wanting to do is highlight what is special about the neighborhood, and so the plan is surrounds all those type of um, activities. We also looked at different um, areas of activity, uh, buildings, density, hot spots, and what, what can happen in the future. Um, this was for the design on the edge, where the concept was about reusing the rail and um, a textile center. In addition, we uh, just completed recently the uh, La Casa Dormitories, which is uh, one of the newest buildings um, right at the Pink Line stop. It is um, a port-in-place concrete building, and it is a transit-oriented development, a TOD, because it's right at the Pink Line L stop. Uh, one of the newest buildings in quite a long time, right on 18th Street, which is the hub, um, the spine of the entire neighborhood. Um, the outside um, uh, takes in the character of Pilsen um, it, with like a patchwork quilt of all different shades of red, uh, bringing in all the vitality of the community. The La Casa Dormitory sits right at the Socalo, and the Socalo, um, which is Spanish for a public plaza. Um, in addition, there is a historic church on the site, and that is going to be one of the next projects. Um, the church um, has been vacant for many years, and there's been other uh, adaptive reuse ideas, but currently uh, we are looking at uh, turning the church into some type of adaptive reuse, possibly an office or open space, uh, possibly for the, the students here at La Casa. So that will be the next project uh, that will anchor the same circle. The Paseo that runs here, we began on this project in 2004. And it was uh, conceived as we were looking and working on a mixed-use development pro project up at 18th and Peoria. And we began to study this abandoned adjacent railway corridor. So as we started to look at it, we noticed that it was a natural site for a, a linear park or trail. And so the idea of the Paseo was born. It ran from uh, 16th Street along Sangamon to uh, Cermak, another prominent um, art arterial road that runs through Pilsen. So the idea of this wide green uh, pedestrian path was really meant to connect the 18th Street Commercial Corridor, uh, the development, as well as CERMAC. Since then, these ideas have percolated, and now we really see it as a uh, systemic opportunity to connect the river and then the neighborhood at large. There are really some similarities with New York's High Line, as well as Chicago's uh, Bloomingdale Trail. However, the one significant difference is that the Pilsen Paseo proposes an adaptive reuse opportunity of the rail line. So this here is the original site of our mixed use development. And you can see here is the abandoned rail line that began at 16th Street, weaves its way down Sangamon, and then continues at Cermak and now to the river. Um, here you can see some installations where we designed a, an opportunity for a textile center that then would expand onto the abandoned rail line our firm will be 20 years old at the end of the year, and because we began all of our work with not-for-profits um, in local communities, uh, we, we've been fortunate enough where we worked on specific projects, and that scope has been expanding. So we do these projects because the local not-for-profit development corporations um, are, um, the, really the work is percolating. For us, as, as a firm, what we enjoy is um, working and orchestrating the entire master plan. Often cities work in silos where the, you know, the Department of Transportation doesn't speak to the Department of Planning, etc. And what we are able to do is to bring everyone together to make sure that there's cohesiveness in the plan.